in the earlier lecture we re already raised the question uh, when is these numbers pi x uh, reciprocals of expected return time when are these numbers uh, form a probability on s we already saw that for finite state space markov chains that is so so in this lectures we are going to eventually really get an answer to that question of course while doing that we have to bring in some other techniques in particular very similar to uh, those random variables zrs uh, which were basically sequence of gaps between successive visits to a particular state y we are now going to need to introduce another sequence of random variables we will do the following between successive gaps of visits to y it will count the number of visits to a different state x and will prove as you know kind of similar result for this new sequence and that will be pretty handy for for finally getting an answer to the question as to when are the numbers pi x form a probability on x on, on the state space s. So, remember that we are considering an irreducible recurrent Markov chain we have defined these quantities pi x 1 over expected time to return to x starting from x and the question that we raised is uh, in the earlier lectures is these numbers pi x we know they are between 0 and 1. So, when do these numbers form a probability on s? We saw that if, if uh, the state space s is finite then it is always a probability, but in general what happens? So, to handle this question we need to prove another result which is very similar to some of the results that we have seen. Uh, this result will play a crucial role in answering the questions that we just asked about the numbers pi x. So, with random variables remember the random variables t r y for r greater than or equal to 1 and z r y for r greater than or equal to 0 were earlier defined t r y's were successive visits to y and z r y's were the gaps between these successive visits. So, this was for a fixed state y. Now, what I do is we define another sequence, but now another set state x would get involved. So, this new sequence is going to be called z suffix r x y. So, it depends on both the states x and y for r greater than or equal to 0. So, let, let me give the definition. So, the 0th one is defined to be the number of k's between 1 and t 1 y such that x k equals x and for r greater than or equal to 1 it is the same thing we want x k to be equal to x, but we count how many k's are there with x k equal to x which are strictly larger than t r y and less than or equal to t r plus 1 y. So, if you look at this definition then basically uh, what they do is the following z 0 x y counts the visits to x from time 1 until the time of the first visit to y. So, we are looking at all k between 1 and t 1 y. On the other hand for r greater than or equal to 1 remember the k you know varies between uh, t r y and t r plus 1 y excluding t r y, but including t r plus 1 y. So, it means that it counts visits to x strictly after time of the rth visit to y up to and including the time of r plus 1th visit to y. So, it is basically trying to count the number of visits to x between successive visits to y. So, what we are going to show is the that these random variables uh, defined as z r x y they satisfy a property very very similar to the properties that were proved for the z r y's earlier. So, here is a proposition for any initial distribution mu the random variables z r x y you only look at random variables indexed by r greater than or equal to 1 then they are identically distributed and the common distribution is the same as the p y distribution of z 0 x y. Now, the idea of the proof is very similar to the analogous fact that we proved about the original z r y's, but let me th therefore just uh, give an outline of the proof. So, for any r greater than or equal to 1 if you look at the event z 0 x y is j 0 etcetera etcetera z r x y is j r you can break up this event as a disjoint union over integers n 1 n 2 n r plus 1 strictly increasing of events where you also put in conditions on t 1 y value t 2 y value etcetera etcetera. So, that is basically what is written here. Now, think of uh, you know this this composite event that we have writ written 
including the values of TRY, uh, different TRYs for R equal to 1 to R plus 1. Uh, part of that is going to be thought of as history. Which part? Namely the part that starts from Z0XY equal to J0 etc etc goes all the way up to TRY equal to NR. So there all that is involved is the history up to time n which I which is just n1 plus n2 plus nr you can clearly see that that part of the event involves only history up to that time with xn equal to y because we are assuming that try is nr and the remaining part of the the composite event can be thought of as future over time n plus 1 to n, nr plus 1. Now use the standard thing probability of a intersection b is probability of a times probability of b given a and then use Markov property and then add over all these integers uh, n1, n2, nr plus 1 to get this final uh, uh, identity that the original event, the p mu probability of that is the p mu probability of what we considered as history part and then conditioned on the history, the conditional probability of that future simply becomes py probability that z0 xy is jr you can see that why that is so. It's just simple Markov property. Now, so what we have done is uh, we have written the original event z0 x equal to j0 etc. zr x equal to jr as p mu probability of you know all these things up to zr minus 1 and then the zr part has come out as the probability that z0 x y equal to jr. Now, you, you can since this holds for every r greater than or equal to 1 you can now prove, uh, complete the proof by induction. So now let's define this quantity theta y x to be e y expectation of z 0 x y. So this is the expected roughly speaking that this is the expected number of visits to the state x for a chain starting at y up to the time that the chain returns to y for the first time. So that's what it is. This is of course going to be clearly from what we have just now proved this is going to be the common expected value of the zr r greater than or equal to 1 under any p mu. So applying strong law of large numbers to the non-negative iid sequence zr x y for r greater than or equal to 1 you do get with p mu probability 1 you have this uh, thing that 1 over r i equal to 1 to r z i x y goes to theta y x as r goes to infinity. Now this sum goes from i equal to 1 to r, we would like to have the sum from i equal to 0 to r, but that is uh, triviality. Observe that the 0th random variable z0 x y is bounded by definition by t1 y which has finite, which is actually finite with probability 1 under p mu. So if you divide that one single random variable by r and let r go to infinity, then with probability 1 that goes to 0. So there is no harm in adding that one extra term. So combining this with the earlier result we actually get 1 over r times the sum from 0 to r now goes to the same limit theta y x as r goes to infinity with probability 1, p mu probability 1 for every mu. Note that y was arbitrarily fixed originally and now we have fixed another state x arbitrarily. So what it means is that the above result holds for any pair of states x, y and s. Now, what this really says is that following, I mean one way is to look at the mathematical formula, but uh, try to understand what it really says. What it really says is that whatever be the initial distribution mu, the number of visits to the to a state x up to and including the r plus 1th visit to a state another state y divided by r converges with probability 1 to the numbers theta y x. And the theta y x that number depends only on x and y and nothing else. So now we return to the question when is these numbers pi y y in s when is when do these num numbers form a probability on s since the numbers all all these numbers are between 0 and 1 essentially it boils down to when is this sum equal to 1. So that is what I have said so recall that since e y of t y lies between 1 and infinity both bounds included. So, pi y lies between 0 and 1 both bounds, bounds included. Also notice that pi y equals 0 if and only if e y t y is infinite because that is the only way pi y would be 0. 
So therefore, if for all y in s, ey ty is infinity, that is expected time to return to y starting from y is infinite for every state y, then all the pi y's would be 0. And there is no hope that pi y's can be a probability because they have to add up to 1 and all of them are 0. So one thing is immediate that for pi y, y in s, this set of numbers to be a probability on s, you must have at least one y in s for which this expectation e y t y is finite. What we'll show is that this is actually sufficient. That is, if there is even one y in s for which e y t y is finite, which will force pi y to be z positive, even if this happens for only one y, we'll show that in that case pi, the numbers pi y do give a probability. Okay, so for that we make a definition. So here uh, we are dealing with a property that for some y in s we want e y t y to be finite. So there is a name for this particular property. A state y is said to be positive recurrent if e y t y is finite. Remember recurrence was that t y should be finite with p y probability 1. Whereas we say that y is positive recurrent if not only t y is finite with probability 1, its expectation also is finite. Of course, a trivial remark is that if uh, you already have e y t y finite, that forces the p y probability that t y is finite is 1. So, a positive recurrent state is of course trivially recurrent. So, now let us try to proceed towards what we just claimed. So, assume that there is some y in s such that e y t y is finite. So, in, in, in other words, in terms of the definition, there is at least one positive recurrent state y. Now, fix such a y and recall those sequences t r y and z r y that we have already considered before. Also recall that for any sequence uh, x, we have the sequence z r x y of random variables which we have defined before. Now, suppose we define theta y x as we have defined before is the e y expectation of z 0 x y. Then what we have proved is this. We have just proved it. Now, recall we had earlier proved uh, with p mu probability 1 n y n goes to infinity and n y n over n goes to pi y's n goes to infinity. So, from that we deduce. So, essentially we know that 1 over r i equal to 0 to r z r y z i y that goes to theta y x as r goes to infinity. If we let it uh, you know instead of r if we put in n n y then let us see what happens. Well, we start with 1 over n r equal to 0 to n n y z r y then we have 1 over n. So, we want to have 1 over n y n. So, that is a matter of multiplying and dividing by n n y which has been done in the second step. Now, the second factor goes to theta y x and the first factor goes to pi y and therefore, the product goes to pi y into theta y x. So far, so good. Now, let us try to understand what is this sum on the left hand side whose limit after dividing by n we obtained. What is this sum? The sum r equal to 0 to n n y it looks complicated z r x y what is this? Just a little thought and you should be able to see what this gives you this sum gives you is counts all the visits to x up to time n plus the visits to x during the time period n plus 1 2 t n n y plus 1. Just think about it and you will be able to convince yourself that is exactly what it is. Of course, this additional part the number of visits to x during the time period n plus 1 to t n n y plus 1 can be at most the duration of this time interval which is t n n y plus 1 minus n and that in turn is bounded by t n n y plus 1 minus t n n y. Now, recall what we had earlier proved. We had earlier proved that with p mu probability 1, t r y by r converges to a limit e y t y as r goes to infinity. And our assumption is that this limit is a finite limit. So, 
tr plus 1 y over r converges as r goes to infinity with probability 1 to a finite limit. Now from that just a little bit of calculus uh, this would clearly imply just convince yourself that if you look at the tr plus 1 over y minus tr y that divided by r has to go to 0 with probability 1. So just convince yourself. If a sequence over r converges to a finite limit then the differences of the sequence divided by r has to go to 0 that is all it is saying. So now with n n x denoting the number of visits to x up to time n we therefore obtain that with p mu probability 1 as n goes to infinity uh, you look at uh, this object what was our earlier sum z r x for r equal to 0 to n n y subtract from that n n x which is exactly the number of visits to x up to time n that divided by n of course that is greater than or equal to 0, but the top we have seen is bounded above by t n n y plus 1 minus t n n y. So, therefore, the ratio is divided uh, is less than or equal to this ratio second ratio and that second ratio is can be written as by again multiplying and dividing by n n y you get this and why does this uh, last thing go to 0 that is because the first factor goes to 0 from what you have just now seen and n n y over n goes to pi y uh, which is of course a quantity less than or equal to 1. So, therefore, we have this that this goes to 0. So, what we have therefore proved is that uh, this uh, difference between our sum and n n x that divided by n goes to 0. We already know that this sum over n goes to pi y times theta y over x with probability 1. So, n n x over n must have the same almost sure limit because the difference between these two goes to 0 is what we have seen. Now, we bring in something else. At the same time, we also know that the quantity n n x over n, we had proved it for y, but y was arbitrary. So, it is also true for x, n n x over n goes to pi x as n goes to infinity that is true for any x. So, on one hand we already knew that n n x over n goes to pi x, but what we have just proved also gives us the limit pi y into theta y x for the same quantity n n x over n. So, therefore, we must have the two things the two quantities pi x and pi y into theta x must be equal. So, that is exactly what the proposition says. Of course, here uh, an important part is that y is a special y for which you are assuming that e y t y is finite equivalently pi y is positive. So, if that is true for some y in s then for every x in s pi x has to be equal to theta y x into pi y. So, that means any other pi x can be seen to be pi y times theta y x where y is that special y. Suppose now the hypothesis of the above proposition is true that is there is at least one state y for which pi y is positive that means y is positive recurrent. The proposition then says that this is true pi x equal to theta y x into pi y for all states x in s. Now, suppose we add it over all x's add both sides over all x's. Well, what do we get on the left hand side we get sum of pi x x in s on the right hand side pi y is free of x and we are adding over x. So, we get pi y and then in front of that sum of theta y x over all x in s, but theta y x by definition is expected e y expectation of z 0 x of y. So, if I add theta y x is over all x s then it becomes the expectation of the sum of the z 0 x y's sum over all x s here just notice that interchange of expectation and sum this sum could be infinite because s is not assumed to be finite. So, ex exchange of this expectation and possibly infinite sum is valid because all the terms are non negative the z 0 x's are all non negative random variable for various x's. So, therefore, we can interchange and this is what we get that summation theta y x over all x in s is this thing. Now, recall that 
z0 x y counts the number of visits to x till time 1 from time 1 till the time of first visit to y. So, if I add all these z0 x's over all states x in s, what do we get? We get ty. So, because between the time and ty, you count how many times the chain visits x and then add these counts over all possible states x, you end up counting the entire time. So, this is exactly ty. So, combining that with the earlier result, what we get of pi x x over x, we already saw that this is equal to the second uh, expression in that equality and then the second expression, uh, the first factor of the second expression is e y of t y because that sum of z 0 x s over all x in s is just t y. So, the what you end up getting is e y t y into pi y, but that by definition is 1 because uh, e y t y is a finite quantity and pi y is just its reciprocal. So, the product of the two is 1. So, what have we proved? We have proved that summation pi x x in x is 1. So, that gives us this proposition immediately, which we have just proved. In an irreducible recurrent Markov chain, if e y t y is finite, equivalently pi y is positive for some y in x, even 1 y in x, then the numbers pi x x in x. Now, it was clear already that e y t y is infinity equivalently pi y is 0. Suppose that is the case for all y in s, then we knew that pi y y in s cannot be a probability analysis because all of these numbers are 0. So, we already observed that for these set of numbers pi y y varying through s to be a probability on s, it was absolutely necessary that 1 pi y must be positive for at least one state y in s pi y positive is equivalent to e y t y being finite. What we have just shown is that it is not just necessary, it is actually sufficient in the sense that if on the other hand we have shown that at least one y is there for which e y t y is finite equivalent to pi y is positive, then it turns out in that case pi x x in x is indeed a probability. So, what we have just proved can now be summed up in the following manner. Fix an irreducible recurrent Markov chain. What we have shown just now is that the set of numbers pi x, x in x, x in s is a probability on s if and only if there is at least one y in s with positive value of pi, positive pi y, which of course is equivalent to expected return time to y starting from y is finite. But that does not yet rule out the possibility that pi x may equal 0 for some x in s. All it says is that if one of them is positive, then the numbers together add up to 1. That is a probability, but some of the other numbers of the other pi x's could still be 0. We will prove a result which will actually rectify this. And what it will imply is that no, if pi y is positive for some y, then indeed none of the other pi x's can be 0. All the pi x's are actually positive in that case. So, that is the result that uh, you know is about to come. So, about to come. So, later what we are going to prove is that in any irreducible recurrent chain, if e y t y is finite, expected return time to y starting from y is known to be finite for some y, this property actually holds for all states. So, it cannot be that an isolated property holding for one state, but not holding from once we have an irreducible recurrent chain, then either this property of expected return time being finite holds for all states. So, in these lectures, we have actually finally been able to completely prove uh, the necessary and sufficient conditions for under which for an irreducible recurrent Markov chain, the numbers pi x as x varies over various states, these numbers actually form a probability. And the result that we have essentially proved is that if your closed irreducible recurrent Markov chain has at least one state y uh, for which the expected return time is finite, 
then of course we saw that that's a necessary condition but we have just now proved that it's actually sufficient condition but of course uh, what we are going to sh show later is something more that happens under that uh, assumption that there is one such y with finite expected return time we'll show that something more happens which will give us more facts about these numbers pi x's.